Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. So I had a really cool idea, well at least it seemed like a good idea at the time, on a project that I wanted to do. Uh, it's something that I'd never seen anyone do before. Let's just say it, uh, it didn't go as expected. So even though it was a fail, it's actually quite interesting. Let me give you a little background. So this is a piece of copper. This is aluminum. And when you mix the two together, you get aluminum bronze. This is an interesting material. It's very tough, very hard. Uh, it's much tougher than brass or uh, regular bronze, which is copper and tin. So if it's such a great material, how come we don't have an aluminum bronze age in our history? Well, that's because aluminum wasn't available until the 1800s. Aluminum oxide is very plentiful on our planet, but smelting it into its pure form is very difficult and very energy intensive and not something that the ancient people were able to do. So I find this interesting that you take this copper, you mix in some aluminum, and you get this. I wonder if we could take advantage of that to make some interesting things. So basically the idea was I was going to take molten aluminum, molten copper, mix them together, and have them alloy while in a molten state, and hopefully get some really neat interesting patterns in the metal. Cool idea, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. So I threw together some boxes, and I'm going to do three different thicknesses of metal. This is 1 16th, 1 8th, and 3 16th. And I am going to put these in green sand. Then I'm going to try pouring some metal down it, and just kind of see what, what kind of patterns I can get with different pour techniques. How could I pour it in? Well, I could pour a little bit of aluminum, wait a minute, pour some copper, wait a minute, pour some aluminum, and just keep doing that. Now, the aluminum is going to be at about... 1400 when I take it out of the furnace, the copper will be around 2000. Now obviously at 1350, copper is a solid, so it's going to be kind of interesting to see how these two interact. The copper would be melting the aluminum, and the aluminum would be solidifying the copper. So in other words, if I have a layer of aluminum here and then I pour copper on top of it, what's it going to do? Is it going to give me a stripe of aluminum with a mix of aluminum bronze and then copper on top? I really have no idea. So one of these I'm going to do stripes. I'm going to pour, wait, pour, wait, pour, wait, and just kind of do that. Another thing would be to just pour the aluminum in one side and the copper in the other side and just see how the two interact. So I'm going to have to experiment and see what kind of patterns I get with different thicknesses and then also what kind of pouring method is going to give me the, the coolest designs. I think it would be really neat if I could get something that's swirling between aluminum, aluminum bronze, and copper. So I had to take some time to fabricate these special crucible holders, and that's because I have to have a crucible in each hand. So being able to lift and pour uh, is a little challenging. So I made it so that I've got a, a good handle with a rest on my forearm so that I can handle the weight, and then when I turn to pour, the weight gets transferred to the other part of my forearm. So I've got good control over the crucible that way. So this is somewhat of a complex pour. I have to heat one metal up to 1400 and the other up to 2000. So I'm going to do the aluminum in here. So that's going to go to 1400. This is going to go to 2000 with the copper.
All right, so let's see what happens here. But before we do, why don't you guys put some thought to this? What do you think is going to go wrong? I think it would be interesting for me and a lot of the viewers if people put their predictions in the comments. Now, don't cheat, don't watch the video and make yourself look like a genius, but actually predict what you think is going to happen, and then maybe throw an edit on later and comment on your prediction. I'm sure there are people out there that know what's going to happen here. Maybe they have some experience with this, maybe they've tried it before, but it turns out there's a reason I've never seen this before. tell you it's not easy to do control how much you're pouring molten aluminum has a lot of surface tension and it makes it very difficult to pour small amounts poured way too much aluminum and ran out so I couldn't do the third one while I'm waiting for the metal to melt again go ahead and open these up all right thin one first well, I've got metal Got metal all the way down. That's cool. Oh, it didn't do it in a solid piece though. Interesting. Or maybe I'm breaking it now. I think I am. I think it's so thin and brittle that it's breaking from me trying to get it out of there. So here I'm pouring the third experiment. My idea was to do a little bit of aluminum, let it cool, a little copper, let it cool. And you can really see how it's difficult to meter out the aluminum. It just all comes at once. how easy it breaks. That's a shame because uh, did you see me almost touch that? That would have sucked. Uh, so here's my disappointing results. This one's kind of interesting. Remember I poured both of these at the same time. Uh, aluminum on one side, copper on the other. How come it looks like that? In retrospect, it's kind of obvious. The aluminum's light, the copper's heavy. If they're both liquid, the aluminum's gonna be on top, the copper's gonna be on the bottom. Now, I didn't pour that much aluminum in there, I don't think, and, and this stuff is so brittle that that has a lot of copper in it. So it did make a copper aluminum alloy. And like, so here's a little piece. That's sort of what I had envisioned, copper, Aluminum bronze, aluminum, all kind of swirled together in a cool way, but I don't think that that's going to happen. I'm not seeing any way to do it with the way this works, especially when you consider the fact that the aluminum is, I mean, it's like a potato chip. It's, it's so weak. Now here, I would say I probably had a poor temperature low enough that the copper solidified while it was still vertical. It still didn't give me a good result. I still have very brittle aluminum. see the copper still malleable over there but uh wow that piece is really tough that must be aluminum bronze here's another one that did kind of what i was hoping for and i actually want to take this to the sander and sand it smooth so that i can see what that looks like so i sanded it up to a thousand grit and then buffed it doesn't that look nice no? Oh, oh, yeah, let me flip it over. See, you can see a reflection in it. 
Yeah, it's actually really very cool. And if I could have made some vases with these kind of patterns just randomly distributed throughout, it would have been very neat. But I don't think that's gonna happen. So why did it end up being such a failure? Well, basically, aluminum bronze is a very tough material, but that is 10% aluminum, 90% copper. Turns out if you have 90% aluminum, 10% copper, you get an alloy that's pretty worthless. Uh, I mean, it breaks like potato chips. You really have to control the compositions of the metals to get good results. At least when it comes to aluminum and bronze. Now, I could try this technique with tin and copper, which would be regular bronze, but regular bronze doesn't have nearly the contrast with copper that aluminum bronze does. I could also try it with brass, uh, in other words, copper and zinc. Uh, I suspect I would also have some marginal results with that. And if you're mixing them while molten and just allowing them to do whatever it is they're going to do, you are certainly going to end up with a significant quantity of what would, what would we call that stuff? Shit alloy? Shit bronze. Yeah, you're gonna end up with a certain amount of shit bronze in there, and it's gonna ruin whatever it is that you're doing. In this video, you might have seen in the background and in, in some of the shots, I made these molds. Uh, these were 3D printed vases, and I was going to use this technique on pouring these, but obviously if I do that, I'm just gonna end up with broken bits of metal. There's no sense in doing it. So I'll use these for something different. If you have any ideas on uh, something cool I could do with them, because I would like to make them into something unique, uh, throw them in the comments. So yeah, it was a failed project, but I learned something, so I consider that a success. I love it when I'm learning something new. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.